number one. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are underway. Both junglers seem to be prioritizing clearing with that Demon Slayer emblem, but right now, it seems like Taz will be alone, and that will mean that he will be clearing a lot less faster compared to Del Rosario. Looking at both of the matchups here, well, the matchup in the mid lane, technically, it will definitely favor Imam and Villa Luna on the Farsa and Lolita when it comes to clear, and especially when it comes to roaming around. Psychots is gonna be the target here. Petrify used by Dapada already early on. Psychots gonna be stunned up, and the instant first blood over to the Philippines before the first minute. Level 2 roam, and this is the danger of that Farsa with the wings by wings. This is where Hijumi on the lead cannot really match that speed, that rotating potential. And with that lead, now that sets a tone for the EXP lane as Hijumi gets taken very, very low. He needs to respect the burst potential. You can see the curveball already from Philippines. Usually, if you take a look at their matches from yesterday even, they always rotate around that gold lane early on. We saw that Opi was picked up up against Soriano with the same kind of strat. With again, Imam rotating with the wings by wings over to the gold lane. The curveball sent was, again, you think we're gonna go to the gold lane, but we instead go to the XP lane. And that just kind of out, that was the moment where they were able to outsmart Indonesia early on. We'll see if this continues here, but both teams are choosing, opting to play it passively early on. They don't really want to look for anything too aggressive. But Del Rosario and the bot up, Ooh. already able to actually steal away a creep in the jungle from Taz. Taz already slightly behind, but the retribution battle is where this Akai pick actually has advantage. In the mid lane, already pressure being exerted, knowing that the, tur the turtle needs to be contested. Taz is looking for a bit of intel, a bit of a momentum. And if Psychos can come in and participate here with his ultimate, that Black Dragon Dragonfone is a big zoning tool. And it seems that the Philippines are opting to just let it go. Mid control was won by Indonesia right now, but that's gonna be the retribution from Tans to secure the turtle. Top side, if you're bashing with the real world manipulation, and that's gonna be Dreams flickering forward, finding Villa Luna, picking up a double kill for the roamer from Indonesia. What a turn of events right here. Letting go of the turtle, going for the topside play, but still falling short as Indonesia actually makes a play. Del Rosario is stuck in a 1v1, but it's a retribution battle, and actually Taz Whoa. comes out on top. Without the retribution, Taz plays it really well with that heavy spin. He was trying to buy time to get that retribution cooldown back, but he didn't even need it. He was able to steal it away. Now, two minutes in, Arashi. Again, we need to talk about that. Indonesia opted to play around the turtle, getting the turtle onto their hands. Philippines, they opted to rotate, maybe even trade in the gold lane, but they weren't able to find any kills. It's because they don't have a lot of combos, but look at here, Taz getting first down. Gonna be taken down here by the damage from Imam. Del Rosario tanking a whole lot. Pops out of Razor's Wrath. As Dreams is gonna be stunned up. They're looking for more right now. Dreams gonna be collapsed on as the pot up rotates as well. It's that ultimate bonding experience already in the third minute. They're grouping up. And it's that speed that the Philippines can use to outmaneuver Indonesia. When the going gets tough and the combos come in from Indonesia, the Filipinos have speed in their hands and they are using it again in the top side. But fortunately, brands will not be targeted just yet. The waves, as you can see, is what is important here. If the Filipinos can use these, this wave pressure to actually roam around faster, it doesn't even matter if the Indonesians have superior engage. I mean, you can take a look at the gold here. The fact that Indonesia were able to find that turtle, able to find a few kills, but still are equal in gold against Philippines shows that the Philippines have just been laning super well. And you can see in the XP lane with just a slight lead early on, the pot up has just been able to rotate, has been more active across the map, providing so much pressure for his team. That's why it's so interesting, man. Contrasting team compositions yet coming out even due to the execution, due to the strategy being applied in this early game right here. And now with the turtle spawning up, both teams going Iron Hook lands though. On to Villa Luna, who's gonna be bursted down by the Venice Rage. Psychos now coming in with a bunch of fire onto two members, stunning them up. But there's no further follow-up. It's the turtle traded in for a kill, one for one. And it's gonna be very difficult for the Indonesians to catch Imam. He does have the Purify that saved his life in that engagement. Dream is zoning Soriano away though, but the backup is coming down through. The Indonesians will be able to pick up the turret, but it does seem that the Philippines will not be able to find any compensation. Both teams still trading back. 
and forth. It's still such an even game in the fifth minute here with both teams standing at literally equal golds, probably just a hundred gold lead, but with Amnesia getting that turret in the gold lane, they will have a little bit more pressure to play with when it comes down to that wave manipulation. They can push the waves further into the side of the Philippines. They can use the lack of vision in the top side as well. And as you can see, Dreams is already trying to find some opportunities in the top side of the jungle. But the Filipinos are rotating in that mid lane. They like doing the siege playstyle, and they can poke down any member from Indonesia. This early in the game, the resistances, the defensive items have not been completed just yet. It's the signature Ube that we've all come Ooh. to know. Villa Luna, though, going aggressively onto Dreams, gonna be stunned up, suppressed by the Bloody Hunt as Villa Luna will fall here in the fifth minute. Indonesia using this Franco really well, looking for another pick towards Imam or Depada. But it and seems like it's just the battle for that mid control. And if this continues, the Filipinos will not have a member tanky enough to just serve as the scouting tool. Right here, the Philippines are still trying to clear the waves, look for the big pickoff, but if the Indonesians keep getting the upper hand like this, it's going to be very difficult for them to even get that vision necessary for them to set up those ambushes. You know, I think Indonesia have been responding to the rotations from Philippines with a lot of class right here. You know, with Indonesia again, utilizing Hijume to actually lane alone in the mid lane, just having dreams to support him in the back. But the mid control will definitely be held down by the Philippines here with a clear. Now both teams rotating over to the turtle. Six minutes in, Del Rosario with Philippines looking for it. Taz goes in for the heavy spin, but Ooh. will be stunned up. Dreams now in the back, not to be able to find anything, but it's going to be Psychots who finds the Petrify. It's another Petrify for the bottom. Now in a 1v5, it's Psychots who's going to be taken down. Both of the XP laners falling down. Del Rosario going to be there in the front, but it's an amazing hook over from the side of Dreams. Del Rosario taken very low. The damage coming in to support that, but it will not be enough. It's just a 1 for 2. Indonesia again with a bit of a lead, but the turtle did go to the hands of Philippines. The Indonesians come out on top due to their superior crowd control, and this is what we're talking about. When the going gets tough, when everything is clumped up like that, the Indonesians have a bit of an advantage, at least until later on in the, in the late game. For now, the Filipinos, they need to be very careful for the Iron Hook. Dreams has been very, very smart in waiting for the right opportunities. And we look at this fight right here, where both EXP laners are able to zone away their respective teams. But afterwards, the damage potential and this amazing hook from Dreams is able to get Indonesia that advantage in that fight. There's so much pressure on the shoulders of Philippines. 1-0 down already. If Indonesia wins this, it's match point. They only need one more game after to secure the victory in this grand finals. So the pressure is on for Philippines. The Iron Hook will be canceled out there by Villa Luna. Now it's Indonesia who are looking to get that mid turret. They're looking to get that mid turret and they have pressure on the side lanes as well. So the jungle is no longer safe for Del Rosario to start farming into. And without any tanks available, as we mentioned earlier, it's going to be very difficult. Brands with the Nibiru's Passion, that's a lot of damage, but that's his conversion coming in from the Philippines. That's a taunt coming in. He's going to be bursted down by the pot up in the back with the help of the Feather Air Strike. A one for zero right now, but Indonesia, they choose to back away, not wanting to go for a 4v5. Five seconds for the Lord, and Philippines will need to go for this right now with a man advantage. The adjustment coming in from the Philippines is so good right now. They are a team that wants to go front to back, but given the right circumstances, they understand that they can flank around and actually catch the back lines from the Indonesia off guard, but that is what Kings is able to do with the Iron Hook. A beautiful feather airs right there to save Villa Luna, but now Psychos jumps in with a Black Dragon form, able to find a better fly, taking the kill onto Villa Luna. The pot up on the backs right now, jumping in. Brand still able to cut away. Taz dealing a whole lot right now as El Rosario and Soriano are on to the Lord. Taz looking for the steal right now at the real world, but Blake will be able to find the two members immobilized. Taz versus Del Rosario. As the bottom comes in, that's every speaker that bottom finds the steal on to the Lord. Del Rosario now trying to back off with Taz as well. The pot up still coming in, providing that escape for Del Rosario. And Philippines come out on top. They're on the back foot, but they find the fight that they require and Dab up with that Benadera. Just so, so good, zoning everyone away and somehow, some way, securing that turtle as well. We'll see that the real manipulation has been fought by Hijumi here to zone the Filipinos away. But the pad up doesn't care. He keeps going for it. And Del Rosario is able to occupy everyone else. And that 
dive advantage that backline vulnerability is showing for the Indonesians. It was super risky, Arashi. I feel like, again, they wanted to just chain their damage together. The pot up with the Phantom Slash and obviously the Retribution from Del Rosario. It caught Taz off guard, but again, that was a risky move because if Taz has read that, they would have been able to find that kill onto the Lord. The pot up, again, just dealing out that damage. He's actually doing a lot here, poking even against Indonesia where he should be just that backline threat. He is able to literally Burst down brands to half HP in the beginning of every fight. And when you're that low against a Farsa, against a Leslie, it makes it very difficult for you to have any impact at all in these big team fights. And look at that. One bolt from the Feather Airstrike is able to chunk Hidrumi down to half HP. That is what the Indonesians are dealing with right now. And in contrast, Hidrumi has finished his glowing one. So the poke game, the DPS is higher. But if the Filipinos can get the burst early on, it's, it won't matter. The tides have turned. Now it's Philippines with the lead. More pressure to play with around that mid lane as well with the tier one taken down. Indonesia are gonna find it extremely hard to actually contest for this mid control. Even though they have a lot of clear with their heroes, with the Eve and the Beatrix, obviously. It's still, again, Soriano, who's gonna be able to open up the map. Taz gonna be caught here. A lot of damage placed onto him. Now blast as well, flicker forward. Taz gets out with a heavy spin. Philippines backing up, playing around still that bottom side river. They made an aggressive play there, but the Lord is not up, so the Indonesians will be able to reset and wait for the next opportunity. But you can see the difference right here. The Filipinos are the ones setting up, waiting for an engage, waiting for a chance to just burst someone down from the side of the, Indo the Indonesians. Unless the Indonesians can secure those defensive items, some physical and magical defense, it's going to be very difficult for them to even be in the picture for those neutral objective contests. We're creeping in towards that late stage of the game. Let's talk a little bit about the drafts, Arashi. Who has the edge when it comes to that late game for both Philippines and Indonesia? In a weird way, it does seem very, very even. But of course, it depends on how the team fight goes. The Filipinos have true damage in their favor, and they have oh. AOE. But oh, a pick off in the top lane with Brands and Dreams finding a kill to the pot up. The man that's been such an impactful player around these neutral objective takes. And just like that, you can see Indonesia circling around the Enhanced Lord, looking for it, trying to commit onto it. Without the fat up in the picture, the Indonesians can have an easier time. They might be using this lore to just bait out some fights. Hijumi has the Ice Queen's wand, so if the Filipinos miss position, the Indonesians can definitely capitalize unless Hijumi almost gets taken out. And now the Indonesians pop the Black Dragon form. Del Rosario on the flank right now, jumping in, looking for the steal! Hijumi finds it, secures it for Indonesia as Villa Luna's Lumna Blast is going to be cancelled out. Del Rosario falling, Indonesia turning the game again towards their favor. 13 minutes in with the Enhanced Lord and an amazing Ooh. snipe from Brands to connect on to Imam. Dreams looking for the hook once again, Villa Luna not having the shield. It is just going to be Indonesia looking for a slow push with the Enhanced Lord. They do not want to overextend. And in the long range department here, Farsa and Leslie against a Beatrix and a Yeev. It's a bit funny because both have burst damage and DPS wise though, I think the Indonesians have it. So if they play the prolonged long range game, I think Hijumi might just be able to do a lot more damage than Imam. But of course, it depends on what the whole team wants to do with the Lord approaching now, with the towers falling down consistently for the Indonesians. They're waiting for an opportunity. And this is where the Filipinos have a chance to go for that massive engage to try and turn things around. Top lane, that's the Enhanced Lord marching down with the mid lane as well, coming in. Indonesia looking for that three-way push. Dreams, looking for the flanks right there, looking for a pick off. A good feather airstrike to zone each way away as it's a beautiful micromanagement from Team Philippines as they are able to defend, losing only one base turret right now. Ooh. Dreams almost finding that hook, but will not be able to. Only one base turret falls in that skirmish, in that siege. You can see the discipline and the care that the Indonesians are using right now. They would usually go for an engage and perhaps go for a big fight, but they know against the Philippines, that could be the exact play that allows them to come back. If you take a look at the levels right now, Brands and Taz already at level 15. They definitely have a bit of an edge compared to the Filipinos. But soon, at about the 15 to 16 minute mark, it will no longer matter. The gold advantage will be moot because both teams will have a full inventory slot. Now it comes down to the vision game. 
When we're at this point, with just the base turrets left standing, Philippines needs to be extremely disciplined when it comes down to opening the jungle up. You can see they're grouping up towards that purple buff for Del Rosario. Brand's able to see down that base turret in the bottom lane with the Renner. Now the mid lane base turret is all that is left. Some vision there provided by Philippines over to the bottom side jungle. But Indonesia will choose to play a discipline, not wanting to go for anything too crazy, as we are going to take a look at the item check here for in 15 minutes. Well, Imam definitely has an abundance of damage right here. The Holy Crystal and the Divine Glaive penetrating the magical defense and also gaining a lot more magic power in the process. Along with that, though, if you itemize for that magical damage, Soriano has a full inventory slot as well with the BOD. So if Brands gets chunked low enough, one hit is all it takes and if he's out of range, the snipes are still an option as well. The Lord dance here from both these teams will decide how this game turns around. We'll see again. Indonesia still holding on to that lead. Again, with the waves being manipulated as it is, slow pushing in the top lane and that bottom lane, Philippines will have to send a few members or maybe just one member to just stay in the base defending. Again, Indonesia will have a little bit of a man advantage here forcing the errors to come through from Philippines as they look for the Enhanced Lord in the 16 minute. Ooh. That's a hook again. Dream's reading it out well, but it's gonna be the stun coming in from the Lord. Immortality popped in. Brand's dodging away from Feather Airstrike. Del Rosario looking for the flanks right now. It's actually gonna be the heavy spin. And that's the Lord secured by Indonesia. Looking on blast by for the Luna. Canceled out by Taz. Soriano, massive in the back line. Still able to find Taz Saikot. Both teams, again, just trading. Oh, Dream with the concealed play. Looking for a hook. Del Rosario and the rest of the Philippines will be able to play around those mini waves to stop the hook from connecting. It's a one for one. Lord for Psychots. Lord for Psychots, and that is calculative gameplay coming in from the Indonesians. Knowing that the Padap is on the other side of the map, they go for that Lord play and they were able to catch the Filipinos off guard. And now, Whoa! we're gonna hook! Hitchaman with the help of Brands, snipes them down! The bottom onto the back line, doing a whole lot of damage the mirror's back in from Brands, spraying them down with the help of the real world manipulation! Hitchaman takes them down, it's a 3-4-0 for Indonesia! Del Rosario with the appraiser's wrath, 1v3, taunting dreams up, but Brands will be able to melt him down. Soriano tagged down, it's a triple kill for Brands and his match point for Indonesia! What a fight by the Indonesians, knowing that they have an advantage, landing the hook at the right moment. Dreams on the Franco, enables his team yet again, and the Filipinos are on the back foot right now. They need to adjust. What a start to the series, but it might be the beginning of the end.